itself was known as the Garden City of Asia. It was one of the jewels of British colonialism. They had very nice set up, very wide roads, big uh, parks. So it's a beautiful place. But now just, what, 47 to 77, that's 30 years. So in 30 years, they'd managed to ruin the whole thing. Prabhupada was very critical of Indian management at that time. They'd made it to hell. So at Panihati, on the site of the Shiradai Utsav Leela, where the banyan tree is, Prabhupada had them measure out the land and also some other land adjoining on the riverbank, which he said we should also apply for. <clears throat> he said, because the riverbank was open and it's very, it was a very kind of narrow strip, so Prabhupada said we should have a temple here. We couldn't figure out whereabouts he would put it, but Prabhupada said, no, we can make it like it's on stilts. You put some columns into the ground, you build the building high enough, and then people can still access the water, uh, the Ganges, by going underneath the temple. So he liked the idea of traveling from here to Mayapur by river also. And he said that we could purchase large river launches and use the Ganges as a highway to travel to Mayapur because this highway is much safer than the other highway. <laughs> Means the car. Going by car is always a very dangerous affair. At least two or three times in a trip, you have a close call. So Prabhupada knew it even then. Now it's even worse because of, uh, I think there's been a five-fold or six-fold increase in traffic on that main highway. So Prabhupada liked that idea of going on a boat and having a river launch is going up and down regularly and using Pani Hattie as a stopover. We tried it last year, finally. We had a lot of talks over the years about how to do it. Uh, the MVT came up with some funds along with some uh, gentlemen from the Middle East. And we attempted to uh, have a regular riv river launch. Unfortunately, for various reasons, which I won't go into today, it hasn't worked out so far. The boat we got was uh, a 44-seater that's uh, been on loan or hire with a company in Calcutta. Uh, we tried a few trips from Calcutta down here to Mayapur, but it really didn't work out very well. So we're trying to figure out now what else to do. In the meantime, the river launch is still there uh, and has been hired by a company in Calcutta for pleasure cruises up and down and around Calcutta. So, as we looked at the land, a kirtan party of all older men came with garlands to greet Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada ignored them, <laughs> which was a little unusual. And then I noticed why, uh, because they were singing kirtan, but they were chanting Nitai Gaurari Shaim, Japa Hari Krishna Hari Ram. <laughs> and nearby there was a small shrine uh, which had a murti of the fellow that had introduced this bogus chant, Radha Raman Charan Das Babaji. So his murti was there. These people were his followers and they'd come to greet Prabhupada. And Prabhupada, he, he let them put the garland around his neck, but he practically ignored them. He didn't want anything to do with them. <laughs> so after our business was done and we traveled back, Prabhupada took his breakfast from the tiffin and after eating, he insisted that we also take prasadam and we shared out the contents. He shared out the contents with all of us. Then he inquired about whether the devotees who were traveling in a second car had prasadam. And when we said that we supposed not, then Prabhupada told us to stop and we flagged down the other vehicle. There were a few devotees in there and then Prabhupada gave them his remnants from what we had eaten in his car. So this is typical of Srila Prabhupada, is always thinking about the benefit of others, welfare of others. So that was our little excursion to um, Panihati. 
uh, as it turned out, the um, government was just undergoing a lot of changes. And a few months after that visit, then um, general election was held and uh, the Communist Party came into power and then stayed in power, as we know, for about 33 years. So they uh, did a very good job of demolishing the infrastructure in Calcutta. They replaced anybody of any importance with their own uh, comrades. Uh, and um, of course, we were going to apply uh, to the government for a, a gift of that land. But as soon as the communists came into power, everything stopped. So we weren't able to do that. Now, since then, of course, the whole place has been developed, but we do have a temple there now uh, by the grace of uh, Bhaktichiru Swami. I haven't seen the place, but I hear it's quite nice. He's built a temple there. So uh, if any of you get the chance, then uh, please go and see the festival there, visit our temple uh, and uh, chant Hare Krishna. Okay, so uh, just give me a second. All right, so I'm going to read the pastime. Uh, this chapter is Anchalila number six, the meeting of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Raghunath Das Goswami. So this is the lead up to the Chiridai festival. So um, Raghunath Das, he was practically a multimillionaire, or at least his father and brother were. Uh, his bro I mean, his father's brother, uh, uh, his uncle. So Raghunath was very well off in all respects, but once he met Lord Chaitanya, he gave up all his interest in everything and he could not be persuaded to take part in any of the business ventures that his uh, elders were doing. Actually, they were tax collectors. And um, I think uh, Hiranya was uh, the uncle's name. Anyway, he was collecting every year about 1,800,000 gold coins. That was the taxes. And out of that, he was supposed to give a certain percentage to the um, Muslim rulers but being a tax man <laughs> and uh, of course whenever there's money around it affects the mentality so he was thinking how to cheat the Muslim ruler of 300,000 gold coins so the ruler found out about that and they went to arrest him they were going to you know, deal with him very severely somehow or another Raghunath Das uh, because his father and uncle were not there he was arrested instead whilst he was in the prison the uh, Kazi came and when he saw Raghunath Das immediately although he was very very angry on his parents he was very soft he be, his heart became melted by seeing Rag Raghunath Das he was a very brilliant beautiful young man very intelligent very peaceful so that had an immediate effect on the Kazi and so eventually he let, let him go. Anyway, that's the first part of the story. So Raghunath was hankering all the time to go and join up with Lord Chaitanya. He would see all the devotees going down to Puri and he wanted to go but the parents were very keen to keep him uh, where he was and so they tried to get him, they got him married to a very beautiful young lady who was said to be the counterpart of Lakshmi Devi herself. She was a very gorgeous young girl. They thought this will surely keep him in one place with such a beautiful wife. But that didn't work. <laughs> he had no interest in married life. He had no interest in his wife. He only wanted to join up with Lord Chaitanya. So he was advised that for now don't make any scene. Yeah. Just stay where you are, be assured. Lord Chaitanya knows about your desire and it will be fulfilled very soon. So for one year, it says in this way, Raghunath passed one year exactly like a first-class business manager. 
but the next year he again decided to leave his home. He, gave up, he got up alone one night and left, but his father caught him in a distant place and brought him back. This became almost a daily affair. Raghunath would run away from home. His father would again bring him back. Then Raghunath's mother spoke to his father as follows. Our son has become mad, she said. Just keep him by binding him up with ropes. <laughs> his father, being very unhappy, replied to her as follows. Raghunath Das, our son, has opulence is like Indra, the heavenly king, and his wife is as beautiful as an angel, yet this could not tie down his mind. How then can we keep this boy at home by binding him with ropes? It is not possible even for one's father to nullify the reactions of one's past activities. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has fully bestowed his mercy upon him. Who can then keep him at home, such a, a madman of Chaitanya uh, Chandra? So then Raghunath Das considered something in his mind, and the next day he went to Nichinanda Goswami, Gosai. In the village of Panihati, Raghunath Das obtained an interview with Nichinanda Prabhu who was accompanied by many Kirtan performers, servants, and others. Sitting, sitting on a rock under a tree on the banks of the Ganges, Nichinanda Prabhu seemed as effulgent as a hundred thousand suns. Many devotees sat on the ground surrounding him. Seeing the influence of Nichinanda Prabhu, Raghunath Das was astonished. Raghunath Das offered his obeisances by falling prostrate at a distant place. Sorry, prostr pro prostrate. Prostrate is another thing altogether. He f fell prostrate at a distant place. And the servant of Nichinanda Prabhu pointed out, There is Raghunath Das offering you obeisances. Hearing this, Lord Nichinanda Prabhu said, You are a thief. Now you have come to see me. Come here, come here. Today I shall punish you. The Lord called him, but Raghunath Das did not go near the Lord. Then the Lord forcibly caught him up and placed his lotus feet upon Raghunath Das's head. Lord Nityananda was by nature very merciful and funny. Being merciful, he spoke to Raghunath Das as follows. You are just like a thief. For instead of coming near, you stay away at a distant place. Now that I have captured you, I shall punish you. Make a festival and feed all of my associates yogurt and chipped rice. Hearing this, Raghunath Das was greatly pleased. So that was his punishment, feed everybody prasadam. <laughs> Raghunath Das immediately sent his own men to the village to purchase all kinds of eatables and bring them back. So it says they're Raghunath's own men. So that seems to indicate that when he went and traveled, he had a few helpers with him when he arrived in Panihati. Raghunath Das bought chipped rice, yogurt, milk, sweetmeats, sugar, bananas, and other eatables and place them all around. As soon as they heard that a festival was going to be held, all ki kinds of brahmanas and other gentlemen began to arrive. Thus there were innumerable people. Seeing the crowd increasing, Raghunath Das arranged to get more eatables from other villages. He also bought, brought two to four hundred large round earthen pots. So they bought out everything that was available in the local village, then they had to keep on going because so many people were coming in and increasing the number. He had to keep sending people out to buy more and more food. 
He also obtained five or seven especially large earthen pots, and in these pots a brahmana began soaking chipped rice for the satisfaction of Lord Nityananda. In one place, chipped rice was soaked in hot milk in each of the large pots. Then half the rice was mixed with yogurt, sugar and bananas. The other half was mixed with condensed milk and a special type of banana known as Kanpa Kala. Anybody know what that banana is? None of our local men. And maybe just my pronun pronunciation. Kanpa Kala. All right. So what does it look like? What is it like? Well, that's the name, but give us a description. Yeah, you've given the name. I'm asking what's the description? Small ones. Okay, there's some nice, sweet, small bananas. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway, there's lots of different types of bananas. He bought a particular kind that's small, but very, very sweet. So, uh, then sugar, clarified butter, and camphor were added. After Nichinanda Prabhu had changed his cloth for a new one, and sat on, the, on a raised platform, the Brahmana brought before him the seven huge pots. On that platform, at the most important, all the most important associates of Lord Nichinanda Prabhu, as well as other important men, sat down in a circle around the Lord. Among them was Ram Das, Sundarananda, Gadadha Das, Murari, Kamalakara, Sadashiva and Parandara, Dananjaya, Jagadish, Parameshwar Das, Mahesh, Gauri Das, and Hoda Krishna, uh, Krishna Das were also there. Similarly, Udaran Das Thakur and many other personal associates of the Lord sat on the raised platform with Nichinanda Prabhu. No one could count them all. Hearing about the festival, all kinds of learned scholars, brahmanas and priests went there. Lord Nityananda Prabhu uh, honoured them and made them sit on the raised platform with himself. Everything, everyone was offered two earthen pots. In one was put chipped rice with condensed milk and in the other chipped rice with yogurt. All the other people sat in groups around the platform. No one could count how many people were there. Each and every one of them was supplied two earthen pots. One in chipped rice soaked in yogurt and the other chipped rice soaked in condensed milk. Uh, sorry, I just read that. <laughs> no, sorry. Some of the brahmanas, not having got a place on the platform, went to the bank of the Ganges with their two earthen pots and soaked their chipped rice there. Others, who could not get a place even on the banks of the Ganges, got down into the water and began eating their two kinds of chipped rice. Thus, some were sitting on the platform, some at the base of the platform, some on the banks of the Ganges. And they were all supplied two pots each by the 20 men who distributed the food. At that time, Raghava Pandit arrived there. Seeing the situation, he began to laugh in great surprise. So he wasn't there at the beginning, but then when later on when he came, he was very happy to see such a utsav going on uh, near, near his house. Because the house of Raghava Pandit was just actually not very far from the banks of the Ganges there. So he brought many kinds of food cooked in ghee and offered them to the Lord. This prasadam he first placed before Lord Nityananda and then afterwards he distributed it amongst the devotees. Raghava Pandit said to Lord Nityananda, For you, sir, 
I have already offered food to the deity, but you are engaged in a festival here, and so the food is lying there untouched. Lord Nityananda replied, let me eat all of this food here during the day, and I shall eat at your home in the night. I belong to a community of cowherd boys, and therefore I generally have many cowherd associates with me. I am happy when we can get together in a picnic just like this on the sandy banks of the river. Lord Nityananda made Raghava Pandit sit down and had two pots delivered to him also. There were two kinds of chipped rice soaked in, uh, soaked in them. When the chipped rice had been served to everyone, Lord Nityananda Prabhu, in meditation, brought Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived, Lord Nityananda Prabhu stood up. Then he saw how the others were enjoying the chipped rice with yogurt and condensed milk. From each and every pot, Lord Nityananda Prabhu took one morsel of chipped rice and pushed it into the mouth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a joke. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also smiling, took a morsel of food, pushed it into the mouth of Nityananda and laughed as he made Lord N Nityananda eat it. <laughs> so they were pushing. You see that sometimes. I don't know whether it's um, a traditional Indian uh, pastime, but I've seen sometimes at marriages especially the bride and groom they put some sweet in each other's mouth so is that a regular affair anyway Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu were doing the same thing pushing some morsel of flat rice into each other's mouths in this way Lord Nityananda was walking through all the groups of eaters and all the Vaishnavas standing there were seeing the fun no one could understand what Nityananda uh, Prabhu was doing as he walked about. Some, however, who were very fortunate, could see that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also present. So not all the people that attended the festival saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just a special few. The others, they were seeing Lord Nityananda, but not, uh, not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Nityananda Prabhu smiled and sat down. On his right side, he kept four pots of chipped rice that had not been made from boiled paddy. Lord Nityananda offered Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu a place and had him sit down. Then together, the two brothers began eating chipped rice. Seeing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eating with him, Lord Nityananda Prabhu became very happy and exhibited varieties of ecstat ecstatic love. Lord Nityananda Prabhu ordered, All of you eat, chanting the holy name of Hari. Immediately the holy names, Hari, Hari, resounded, filling the entire universe. When all of the Vaishnavas were chanting the holy names, Hari, 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 Hari. <laughs> and eating, they remembered how Krishna and Balaram ate with their companions, the cowherd boys, on the banks of the river Jamuna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu are extremely merciful and liberal. It was Raghunath Das's good fortune that they accepted all of these things, all these dealings. Who can understand the influence and mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He is so powerful that he induced Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come out, to come and eat chipped rice on the banks of the Ganges. All the confidential devotees who were cowherd boys, headed by Sri Ram Das, were absorbed in ecstatic love. They thought the banks of the Ganges to be the banks of the Jamuna. When the shopkeepers of many other villages heard about the festival, they arrived there to sell chipped rice, yogurt, sweetmeats and bananas. As they came, bringing all kinds of food, Raghunath Das purchased it all. He gave them the price for their goods and then later on fed them with the very same food. 
So he paid them, bought what they had, they soaked it in yogurt and dye, and then gave it back to the same person that they bought it from and let him have it for free. <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, the Kayastas, they're always looking for a business opportunity. Some festivals going on, okay, let's go there, take all our goods, we'll see the entertainment, and at the same time, we'll make a good profit. So, businessman. <laughs> Anyone who came to see how these funny things were going on was also fed chipped rice, yogurt and bananas. After Lord Nityananda Prabhu finished eating, he washed his hands and mouth and gave Raghunath Das the food that was remaining in the four pots. There was food remaining in the, th there, there was food remaining in the three other big pots of Lord Nityananda and a Brahman had distributed all of that to the devotees, giving a morsel to each. Then a Brahman brought a large flower garland, placed the garland on Nityananda Prabhu's neck, and smeared sandalwood pulp all over his body. When a servant brought betel nuts, betel nuts, and offered them to Lord Nityananda, the Lord smiled and chewed them. With his own hands, Lord Nityananda Prabhu distributed to all of the devotees whatever flower garlands, sandalwood pulp and betel nuts that were remaining. Of course, we don't, uh, although we're followers of Nityananda and Gora Hari, we don't eat betel. That's uh, one of the restricted items. It's so kind of like a mild intoxicant, I guess. Maybe like cigarettes or something. Anyway. The Lord can do whatever he likes, but we shouldn't think that we can do exactly what the Lord has done himself. So after receiving the remnants of food left by Lord Nityananda, Raghunath Das, who was greatly happy, ate some and distributed the rest amongst his own associates. Thus I have described the pastimes of Lord Nityananda Prabhu in relation to the celebrated festival of chipped rice and yogurt. Lord Nityananda Prabhu rested for the day and when the day ended he went to the temple of Raghava Pandit and began congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Lord Nityananda Prabhu first influenced all the devotees to dance and finally he himself began dancing thus inundating the entire world in ecstatic love of God. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was observing the dancing of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu could see this, but the others could not. The dancing of Lord Nityananda Prabhu, like the dancing of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, cannot be compared with anything within these three worlds. No one can properly describe the sweetness of Lord Nityananda's dancing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally comes to see it. After dancing and after Lord Nityananda had rested, Raghava Pandit submitted his request that the Lord take supper. Lord Nityananda Prabhu sat down for supper with his personal associates and made a sitting place on his right side for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there and sat down at his place. Seeing this, Raghava Pandit felt increasing happiness. Raghava Pandit brought the prasadam before the two brothers and thereafter distributed prasadam to all the other Vaishnavas. There were varieties of cake, sweet rice and fine cooked rice that surpassed the taste of nectar. There were also varieties of vegetables. The food prepared and offered to the deity by Raghava Pandit was like the essence of nectar. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there again and again to eat such prasadam. When Raghava Pandit offered the food to the deity after cooking, he would make a separate offering for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Every day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would eat at the house of Raghava Pandit. Sometimes he would give Raghava Pandit the opportunity to see him. Raghunath Pandit would bring and distribute prasadam to 
to the two brothers, feeding them with great attention. They ate everything, and therefore there were no remnants left. He brought so many preparation, presentations that no one could know them perfectly. Indeed, it is a fact that the Supreme Mother, Radharani, personally cooked in the house of Raghava Pandit. <laughs> Sri, Srimati Radharani received from Devasa Muni the benediction that whatever she cooked would be sweeter than nectar. This is the special feature of her cooking. Aromatic and pleasing to see, the food was the essence of all sweetness. Thus the two brothers, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu, ate it with great satisfaction. All the devotees present requested Raghunath Das to sit down and take prasadam, but Raghunath Pandit told them he will take prasadam later. All the devotees took prasadam, filling themselves to the brim. Thereafter, chanting the holy name of Hari, they stood up and washed their hands and mouths. After eating, the two brothers washed their hands and mouths. Then Raghava Pandit brought flower garlands and sandalwood pulp and decorated them. Raghava Pandit offered them betel nuts and worshipped them their lotus feet. He also distributed betel nuts, flower garlands and sandalwood pulp to the devotees. Raghunath Pandit, being very merciful towards Raghunath Das, offered him the, the dishes with the remnants of food left by the two brothers. He said, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has eaten this food. If you take his remnants, you will be released from the bondage of your family. The Supreme Personality of Godhead always, always resides either in the heart or in the home of a devotee. This fact is sometimes hidden and sometimes it is manifest for the Supreme Personality of Godhead is fully independent. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is all pervasive and therefore he resides everywhere. Anyone who doubts this will be annihilated. <laughs> in the morning after taking bath in the Ganges, Nityananda Prabhu sat down with his associates beneath the same tree under which he had previously sat. Raghunath Das went there and worshipped Lord Nityananda's lotus feet. Through Raghunath Pandit, sorry, through R Raghava Pandit, he submitted his desire. So he didn't want to speak directly with the Lord, so he got a senior devotee to make his presentation and ex uh, express his desire. He said, I am the lowest of men, the most sinful, fallen and condemned. Nevertheless, I desire to attain shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Like a dwarf who wants to catch the moon, I have tried my best many times, but I have never been successful. Every time I try to go away and give up my home relationships, my father and mother unfortunately keep me bound. No one can attain the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without your mercy. But if you are merciful, then even the lowest of men can attain shelter at his lotus feet. Although I am unfit and greatly afraid to submit this plea, I nevertheless request you, sir, to be especially merciful towards me by granting me shelter at the lotus feet of Chaita Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Placing your feet on my head, give me the benediction that I may achieve the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without difficulty. I pray for this benediction. After hearing this appeal by Raghunath Das, Lord Nityananda Prabhu smiled and told all of the devotees, Raghunath Das's standard of material happiness is equal to that of Indra, the king of heaven. Because the mercy because of the mercy bestowed upon him by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Raghunath Das, although situated in such material happiness, does not like it at all. 
Therefore, let every one of you be merciful towards him and give him the benediction that he may soon, very soon, attain the shelter at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One who experiences the fragrance of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna does not value even the standard of happiness available on Brahmaloka, the topmost planet, and what to speak of he heavenly happiness. Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is offered sublime poetic prayers by those trying to attain his favor. Thus he is known as Uttama Shloka, being very eager to gain, the, to gain the association of Lord Krishna, King Bharat, although in the prime of his youth, gave up his very attractive wife, affectionate children, most beloved friends, and opulent kingdom, exactly as one gives up stool after excreting it. Then Lord Nityananda Prabhu called Raghunath Das near to him. He placed his lotus feet upon Raghunath Das's head and began to speak. My dear Raghunath Das, he said, since you arranged the feast on the banks of the Ganges, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come here just to show you his mercy. By his causeless mercy, he ate the chipped rice and milk. Then after seeing the dancing of the devotees at night, he took his supper. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gora Hari, came here personally to deliver you. Now rest assured that all the impediments meant for your bondage are all gone. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will accept you and place you under the charge of his secretary, Swarup Damada. You will thus become one of the most confidential internal servants and will attain shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Being assured of all of this, return to your own home. Very soon, without impediments, you will attain the shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Nityananda had Raghunath Das blessed by all the devotees and Raghunath Das offered his respects to their lotus feet. After taking leave of Lord Nityananda Prabhu and then all of the other Vaishnavas, Sri Raghunath Das consulted secretly with Raghava Pandit. After consulting with Raghava Pandit, he secretly delivered 100 gold coins and about seven tolas of gold into the hands of Nityananda's Prabhu's treasurer. Raghunath Das admonished the treasurer, do not speak about this to Lord Nityananda Prabhu now, but when he returns home, kindly inform him about the presentations. Thereupon, Raghava Pandit took Raghunath Das to his home. After inducing him to see the deity, he gave Raghunath Das a garland and sandalwood pulp. He gave Raghunath Das a large quantity of prasadam to eat on his way home. Then Raghunath Das again spoke to Raghava Pandit. I want to give some money, he said, just to worship the lotus feet of all the great devotees, servants, and subservants of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. As you think fit, give them 20, 15, 12, 10, or five coins each to each of them. Raghunath Das drew up an account of the amount to be given and submitted it to Raghava Pandit, who then made up a list showing how much money was to be paid to each and every devotee. With great humility, Raghunath Das placed 100 gold coins and about two tolas of gold before Raghava Pandit for all the other devotees. After taking dust from the lotus feet of Raghava Pandit, Raghunath Das returned to his home, feeling greatly obliged to Lord Nityananda Prabhu because of having received his merciful benediction. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Nityananda Prabhu ki jai, Raghunath Das Goswami ki jai, Gora Premanandi. So it's five to nine. Does anybody have anything to add or a question about this wonderful festival?
No questions, no comments? Yes, Prabhu. At present, uh, Prabhuji, this uh, site of this festival, where it is located? In, can you say that? This I Bengal, in this Bengal, which part of Bengal, this uh, site, uh, Bank of Ganges? Where is it? Yeah. Yeah, Panihati, if you drive from the center of Calcutta, it's uh, between an hour and an hour and a half north of Calcutta. Thank you, Guru. Hare Krishna. That place there where the festival was held, that's the Ganges is very wide, very voluminous. So, any of the questions? No. All right. Thank you all very much. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.